So I thought the quality of this cob was worth documenting. Um, I think it's really nice. So it's from two ba two twenty-five kilo bags of sand. Uh, six of these buckets with mud, and then one bucket with uh, dry clay from the greenhouse, and then one pretty full bucket of sawdust. And so the mud is a bit wetter than I've been making it, because I ended up making a really big batch of uh, of of clay and then adding too much water. But um, so it's pretty thick. It's pretty thick, so yeah. But yeah, so it's like this. Um, and then when I mix it all together, well, I mix the the dry ones, the the dry ingredients first, um, and then I I add the the mud, and so it's still. I mean, I can feel like some water between my toes when I do it. Uh, so I thought it was going to be more wet, I mean maybe even too wet, but actually it's quite strong. If I take a ball like this, and I mean it's, it's still a bit brittle, and only slightly sticky. And it doesn't really break when I throw it up, which is a good sign, <laughs> except there. Um, but yeah, so I've been making a path like this. And that's the, that's... Yeah, that's just the the clay outer. So if I slap a ball on, <laughs> yeah, well, it doesn't work. Um, but yeah, and then I add sawdust, a mixture of sawdust and a bit of lime. And I really don't like working with the lime, but supposedly it makes it. Uh, I guess more resistant to moisture or it reacts with it and then it makes a kind of spongy texture apparently and uh, yeah and it, it uh, deters insects but yeah when I mix it I breathe it in and it's really not pleasant and it leaves my hand super pruney if I touch it barehanded but yeah so I just kind of fill the gap like this So essentially, then I have the the clay, the the cob layer, the insulation layer with the sawdust and lime, and then another layer of clay. And so, the idea would be that this clay here still acts as some kind of thermal mass, but then it's insulated from being lost to the outside with this layer. Um, and it seems to really be a, just a a big play between thermal mass and insulation. Um, and then the logs, the logs are all 20 centimeters wide, and I just kind of place one like this. So it, it ends up looking kind of cool. Um, but yeah, even though this technique has been done pretty extensively by others, and I mean, there's even a few books on building with just this method, saunas in particular, um, I'm not too sure how effective, I mean, or how wood will react or interact with the sauna when it is placed like this and you have all the fibers uh, going, I mean, it's essentially, I would imagine serving as little mini air vents, whereas if it's like this and you go against the fiber, I feel like it'd be much more effective at keeping the heat in, but yeah, it's uh, to be experimented with.